Now that we have an understanding of supply and demand and market equilibrium, let's look at the market effects of changes in demand. We want to differentiate between two things, a change in quantity demanded and a change in demand. Remember, anytime one of the variables on the axes of a graph, and here we have the price of pizza and the quantity of pizza, if one of those variables changes, suppose there's a drop in the price, to differentiate between two things, a change in quantity demanded and a change in demand. Remember, anytime one of the variables on the axes of a graph, and here we have the price of pizza and the quantity of pizza, if one of those variables changes, suppose there's a drop in the price from eight down to six dollars, we're going to have a movement along the demand curve and that's a change in the quantity demanded. But if any of the other variables that affect demand change, you're going to have a shift or a change in demand and we'll see the demand curve actually shift instead of moving along the demand curve. Now first let's define some words and some terms so we know what we're talking about when we look at different types of goods. A normal good is a good for which an increase in income increases demand. Most goods you can think of are normal goods but for some goods when there's an increase in income you buy less and that's a decrease in demand and that's called an inferior good. We compare different goods to each other. Sometimes goods are what are called substitutes. You can think of pizza as the example we've been looking at. What's a good substitute for pizza? Maybe tacos or sandwiches or something else you might eat for lunch. Complements, two goods are complements when they go together. And so if we look at pizza, something that you would eat along with pizza, maybe salad or drink with pizza, maybe lemonade would be complements. What we're going to see is when income changes for a normal good, it has one effect on demand. For an inferior good, it has the opposite effect. And we're going to see the, and the prices of substitutes and complements will affect the demand of the other goods. And so we can see lots of things are going to interact with the markets that we're looking at. Here, here's what happens to demand. Suppose we're looking at anything which will increase demand or shift demand to the right. That's an increase in income with a normal good or a decrease in income for an inferior good. If the price of a substitute goes up, suppose the price of tacos rises, well you're going to buy fewer tacos and more pizza. So an increase in the price of a substitute increases the demand of whatever good we're talking about. Price of compliments. If the price of a compliment, maybe lemonade, if you drink a lot of lemonade when you eat pizza, if the price of a complement goes down, we would expect to see the demand for the complementary good go up. What if we just look at the population in an area? If there's more people, we would expect demand to go up. If consumer preferences for the good increase, maybe an advertising campaign or some scientific evidence of the health effects of a good or a service, we would expect to see the demand for that good rise. And if we expect future prices to rise, for a good or a service, we might want to try to buy it now and so we would end up seeing demand increase. So once again, that's a shift to the right of the demand curve. What are the effects of an increase in demand? Now we look at the market and really try to see what are the really large impacts that we can look at on price and quantity using the fact that we know we're going from one equilibrium to another equilibrium. Suppose we have an initial demand curve, D1, and a supply curve. And something happens that we looked at, either an increase in income for a normal good or a change in price of substitutes and complements that shifts the demand curve to the right or increases demand. What happens? Well, at the old price level, at the old price of 8 and the new demand curve, D2 and supply curve, there's an excess demand for whatever good we're looking at. Here we have pizzas. Anytime there's an excess demand, we expect to see prices rising. So when we look at the effect of an increase in demand, we see prices rising and the quantity traded in the market rising as we move from one equilibrium at point A to the next equilibrium at point C. Now what about a decrease in demand? Well, a decrease in demand is a shift to the left of the demand curve. In a second, we'll talk about what types of changes in variables will decrease demand, 
but what will we see as the effect of the decrease in demand? Well, we're going to move from an equilibrium with the initial demand curve, D1, and the supply curve at point A down to a new equilibrium at point C with the new demand curve and the supply curve. And at point C, we can see that the price has fallen and the quantity has fallen. Anytime there's a decrease in demand, we see prices going down and the quantity going down. And what variables decrease demand? Well, it's the same variables we had before, but moving in the opposite direction. So if we have income falling for a normal good, demand is going to go down. If we have income rising for an inferior good, demand is going to go down. Or if we just look at population, a decrease in population decreases demand.